Hey guys, Colbert here. Welcome back to War and Order, the city building game in a medieval theme. You have soldiers, you have cavalry, you have your mages, you have angels. There's lots of things to do in this game. So I wanted to make this video as a way to introduce the game to you, as well as give you some of the beginner tips I've found and things that I've regret not knowing earlier in my uh, you know time playing this game. I am... I have been playing it for quite a while. As you can see, my castle is level 18. So I have put some time into the game and learning some stuff. I'm by no means an experienced player, but I am trying to learn as much as I can and share my uh, experiences with you guys. So if you are interested in playing the game, the game, follow the link down below in the description and comments of this video to try out the game and also help the channel out. So let's get started with some of the tips that I have. The most important one, which obviously makes sense is do your daily quest every single day if you don't know what i'm talking about this is the quest tab right here i'm not talking about the growth quest these are the daily quests every single day these refresh and give you lots of free resources and especially the one at the end can give you lots of things such as lord xp materials chests healing speed up and emblem emblem fragment chest okay all of these are important in terms of progressing your account and making sure that you follow any of these tasks right here in order to get the the complete 360 points to finish your dailies this is a very important part of playing the game and experiencing the game uh, as well as getting some free stuff next one up is join an alliance an alliance is a very important part of your journey in war and order it's not only about having allies to help you while you're doing your buildings and uh, completing your tax and help you get those quicker to be done quicker right um as you are helping others others can help you in your let's say upgrading of units or upgrading of your buildings and make that faster but also the alliance is a key way to keep you protected as you can see right here this is where i am right now i'm kind of protected by the power of all of the alliance together we're all bunched up together when you join an alliance the leader will usually tell you come on and teleport near us why is that so important so if you ever get attacked and one of your alliance um, members is online he can actually go and reinforce you and help you out and protect you in a way from that upcoming attack and also protect your resources so having an alliance is not only protecting yourself you're also protecting others it's a cool way to also interact with other members of the community and learn more about the game from more experienced players and that is what i found uh, is crucial in these uh, in this game because you gotta learn from the experts this is the quickest way to learn you just ask them uh, there's the the chat that you have right here we you can share messages with the other alliance members and it's a very quick way to learn some stuff especially when you're having um, some questions about the game I, I think that's really cool plus there's a whole different um you know amount of things that you can do in an alliance like doing different fights there's alliance quests which give rewards and a lot more so however long you delay getting into an alliance it's also delaying your progression in the game the overview tab is also very important. Why is that? Because it's a quick way to know, okay, what am I doing wrong at this point? What am I slacking on? Okay, what well, I should be researching right now. As an example, myself, I should be researching. I have all my barracks, you know, um, upgrading my units. That's good. Um, I, I, I am actually trying to train and get more swordsmen, more priests, more mages, and more cavalry, but... What am I doing wrong here? I'm actually not researching anything, and that is very bad. Researching, it's another way to get you stronger, make your army stronger, but also help you in all sorts of di different areas, such as resources, military, city defense, and development. So depending on how you want to progress through and have your play style, you should be upgrading any of these at any point that you're online and, and playing. And when you're offline, you make sure you go and find the hardest one that's going to take the longest to upgrade as long as you got the resources of course and start upgrading that one so for example this one is going for a good one hour 49 minutes so i should be able to research this one but i don't have enough um, resources at the moment so i'm going to go and try and find a, an easier one and, and that should be okay so 27 minutes i should be online 
uh, by that time and I'll upgrade it, the next one and so on and so forth, right? That's how you, you follow through. But also there's many other tasks such as marching armies. Do you have an army going on somewhere right now? You should, right? It's not only about attacking, but it's also about sending your army to gather resources because that's also a part of your daily quest. Here you can also see if you have any units you should be healing. I don't have any. I'm, I'm okay. I'm healthy. My armies are doing good. So I just have a, an idle queue for my hospital. And materials production, you should always be producing something. This helps you with the forge and creating items to equip on your lord. And talking about a lord and the lord skills that you have, okay? If I click on my lord right here, I have different sets of equipment at the moment. I'm slowly upgrading those using my materials, but there's also very specific Lord skills that you should be following through and upgrading. These are very important in order to make you stronger and your choices have to be strategic because you do not have the ability to reset the Lord skills all the time for free. Okay. So the way that I play the game is that I'm using Archer units and infantry so the infantry is on the front the archer units are on the back side and with that way i am controlling both the front and the back side and the battle goes hopefully to my uh to my favor right so how i went through the lord skills is i went and selected specific upgrades for my archers and for my infantry and i didn't go for cavalry and mages the reason for that is i find this is more um for experienced players and players who have a lot more resources available and not so much for me okay especially majors they can be stronger but they are squishier so there is a danger where you are going to be losing out your units so i prefer to go the infantry and archer out in terms of my skill development your castle i started the video talking about how my castle is level 18 but i didn't put in some time to explain what that means your castle is what controls everything else it's not your barracks it's not your hospital it's not your resource depot it's nothing else it's your castle why am i saying this because the level of your castle then dictates everything and every other requirement that you have on your buildings and how you're upgrading your buildings and it's also the most cost costly and takes the most amount of time to upgrade so right now I have different things that I'm working on in order to get them upgraded because getting to level 19 for my castle will take me quite some time. For example, I'm upgrading the blacksmith, which will take another 18 hours, but that's only to level 17. I need to get it to 18 and I also need to get my castle wall to level 18 plus get all of these resources, 10 million food, 10 million lumber and so on. So it's very important that I slowly start to stack up all those resources for my future development of my castle. Plus, when I do have everything like that, it takes five days and 22 hours of actual, you know, time to upgrade this unless you've got some fast upgrades to use. So have that in mind. Always be upgrading this because eventually you reach a point where it says your castle must be at this level in order to upgrade it further. And this dictates on how strong your barracks are going to be, how strong every single other of your buildings are going to be. So once your, your castle is at the highest point that you can, you should be trying to focus on upgrading the units, the buildings that the castle is saying in order to get it to the next level and so on and so forth. But of course, another tip is when you're playing and you're actively playing your online, you shouldn't be upgrading these big buildings that take hours upon hours upon hours to finish you should go and find your smaller buildings and make sure you upgrade those because some of those might take like 10 minutes or 20 minutes to upgrade so you know you'll be online you'll be able to switch on your builder to the other unit and so forth and in that way be a little bit more efficient in how you are you know building everything and as you can see i'm actually slacking on that end as well i have lots of level six here which i should be upgrading more but I find getting my big buildings, um, working on my big buildings is also like something that I want. And especially the uh, Guardian Temple, which I recently unlocked, which allows me to have access to angels, which are some very strong units. And talking about very strong units, your barracks is also that. The level of your barracks dictates 
on how strong your army is going to be. And having a strong army helps you with everything in terms of gathering materials, but also fighting different monsters on the battlefield, plus other lords who might be slacking and not having a shield up or having lots of resources available on their depot. Um, not on the depot, but excess, which you can actually attack and acquire. So what does that mean? What, what did I just say? So the resources that you see on the top is not all the resources that I have. I have more resources available in terms of these crates. Okay. Why do I keep them in the crates? Why don't I, don't I just click use and just take all these resources and then go about my, my day. Okay. And, and use them on different upgrades and stuff. If you keep them in these crates, they cannot be stolen by the enemies when you get attacked. So when somebody attacks you, you'll see the report at the end of the fight. Okay. And that will say um, units lost and then also resources stolen. Very specifically, it's going to say a certain amount. Okay. That means if you have lots and lots of resources, let's say you, you use up all those packs and you see those big numbers, millions of resources, you're, you're feeling happy, but then you go away, you go make a coffee or something, come back and you see, all right, well, what happens? Why am I at zero? Well, it's because you got attacked and you got your stuff stolen. It won't happen that quickly, but I'm just giving an example of what, what will happen. So a good way to protect those is using your crates and also upgrading your depot. As I've mentioned multiple times, depot, this is a way to protect your resources up to a specific amount, which you can see here. Uh, at level 10, my, pr my protected resource is about 300,000 for most things and iron and stone is at 65 and 30,000. So I should be upgrading this, but this is not something that is crucial for me because as I shown you, I have most of my resources in crates and I'm not at a point where I have millions and millions of resources um, that are not in crates that I should be caring to protect. So I'm totally fine with it. I'm also near the Alliance, so I'm kind of protected. I'm, I'm cool with it. Another thing to make you stronger is this right here, the drill grounds. Drill grounds are something that people quit using um, because they think, okay, it's the same thing to upgrade your newer units than to just to, to train new units than to upgrade your units. Well, this is a way to just have more units and make those bad, lower quality, lower tier units, make them stronger. And that is what I'm doing right now. I'm actively upgrading my tier four infantry to tier six. That is a big jump. It's a big jump and it's available depending on, on your uh, building level. So having that in mind, you should be upgrading these whenever you have the time. It does take resources, but it will make you a lot stronger. And the more units you have available to upgrade, the longer it's going to take. So for example, right now I'm training lots and lots of warriors, and that takes me another one day and two hours, which I can expedite using my speed ups, but I don't want to, um, cause I want to use these mostly for other things. Let's see when I want to, when I want to, quickly recruit some strong armies. I'm going to use that instead. But for now, I'm just keeping everything and just letting it roll. Okay. Re letting it roll and seeing where, uh, where it takes me in terms of power and how I can progress through. You cannot always be online 24 seven, right? Y you need some sort of way to protect yourself from attacks. Let's say you will be for some time away. A big thing that you can use to protect yourself is shields. Okay. Peace shields. You can actually buy these using gems, which you get a lot of gems as you play through and complete different events and you do your different tasks every single day. You get gems, you can buy those, you can buy those with alliance coins as well. But these peace shields are very important to protect you from being scouted or attacked. And as you can see, I have multiple of those saved up and available to me in case I need to protect everything that I've so, so hardly, um, you know, been working on for the account. So peace shields are very important. And if you see, um, you have those available, you can use them strategically to protect yourself. But remember, if you try to attack somebody while you have a shield on, it's going to remove the shield. So it's not a way to be immune to everything. So if you're in a war with other alliances, you can't just use this and then start attacking everybody. Everybody would do that, right? So in a war, 
you are getting attacked and you will be attacking the peace shields are uh, a quick tool that you can use though in case you need to be away for some time and you have a lot of things you want to be protecting especially your units which you don't want to be dying you don't want to have them die and your units are so important to have always a good and healthy amount because you're sending them remember you're sending them for marchers throughout the map and killing monsters this is a big part of of the game and acquiring resources because you have your different amounts of stamina every day and stamina refills and then using this button right here which is um searching for different monster levels you go and try and find those and if you can beat them you start farming them up i have the auto attack mode available for me it's a paid um to pay thing that you can do in the game but if you don't want to do that you just do the fights every single time on manual and you use that to your advantage to get a good chunk of resources for free depending on the amount of stamina that you have and of course if you can beat the the fight okay so for me as an example on 19 i haven't beaten 19 yet it says it's gonna be an even match here i could potentially try and and see if this is actually gonna be a winning fight for me I don't want to risk it though so i will i could have done just this okay level 18 do level 18s through the auto attack so i want to choose between level 18s i want to choose to use my my refills which i have a couple and i want to be using my strongest units right there okay and this will make it extremely easy for me to fight and and, and win throughout the map if i want to do multiple marches that is a little bit different and for more experienced players but you can do this and just have your start auto attack and have your troops march at all times go find the nearest target they, they'll come back they'll go again they'll come back they'll go again and in that way you'll be earning resources and not having your stamina be at maximum which i just had but i wanted to show this as part of the video finally there is lots of different mini games within the game you should be also doing those while you have different tasks um, going on at a different point you should have the opportunity and time to go and play them especially this one right here which i find extremely interesting the infinite wars i showcased it in a previous video infinite wars is a tower defense version of uh, a, a game inside war and order and it's a lot of fun you should be doing this you can get lots of resources which you can use then to just upgrade your experience in the the game so Definitely do your fights, Infinite Wars, every single day, and you will not, you will not regret it. Uh, and it's also a fun, it's a fun way to experience this mini game. I uh, don't want to show it again, but I do think it's it's an important part of, of playing the game and experiencing more and more of War and Order. So uh, let me heal my units. What happened there? Did we lose? Did we lose on 18? Something happened there, and we lost on 18. Maybe I didn't send my best units, but. Um, but yeah, guys, this was the video. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have some tips, some beginner tips uh, that I might have skipped on. Maybe you are more experienced than me. Let me know down below. Thank you all for watching. Remember to download the game using my download link on the description and comments of the video. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.